Welcome to the next video on the laws of logic. In this video, I will introduce you to more of the laws of logic. The next law is the absorption law. And the absorption law states that P and P or Q is the same as P. Or P or P and Q is the same as P. Now what is actually going on in here? So if P is true, then what I have here is true and true or Q. Now true or Q, doesn't matter what Q is, it's always going to be true because I have got a true in here and true and true is always true so that gave me p back but what happens if I have got a false in here now false or q that will give me q back because if q is true I have true in here but if q is false I have false in here but false and anything is always going to be false because the end gate, remember the end operation is only true if both of them are true. So that's why this is always giving me back P. Let's see what's the situation in here. So if P was true, true and Q is always going to give me back the Q. But true or Q, that's always going to be true because one of them is true. So that's gave me back P, but what happens if P is false? False and Q will always be false, because once I've got a false in the end operation, that's going to give me back a false. But false or false is always false, so that's again giving me back the P. So that's why the absorption law is called absorption because it absorbs, this makes make the Q irrelevant, the Q disappears. The next law is implication. And the implication states that P if then Q is logically equivalent to the not P or Q. Now the easiest way to convince you that this is true is to look at the truth tables for both of them. So P, Q, P if then Q, what was the truth table? True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Remember that the if then or implication only returned false in this case. Everywhere else it was true. Would that not P or Q do the same thing? Now, to be able to calculate the output of not P or Q, what are the input values that I need to know? Now, I have got two different inputs in here. So I'm starting with P and Q. And the input values, again, are going to be true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, you can have these pairs of inputs in any or order whatsoever as long as you don't repeat the same pairs but because I want to compare these two tables easiest for me if I set them up the same way so I can easily see if the output giving me the same answer or not now I need to combine together not P or Q so I don't actually need P I need the not P and then my not P then will be false false true true and then the not P or Q what I need to combine together now is the not P column with the Q column now remember for the OR operator if the one of the inputs is true the OR, op or operator will return a true value true or false is true false or false is false true or true is true and true false or true is true again. So what I ended up with is the same output for both of the operations. So the implication law P implies Q or P if then Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. 
The next law that we're going to look at is the equivalence law. The equivalence law states that P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to P if then Q and Q if then P. To convince ourselves that this is true, again what we're going to do, go through and compare the truth tables. So P, Q, P if and only if Q, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Remember if and only if returns the truth value if the income values are the same which is in the first and the last case and returns a false value if the input values are different. Now would this long combination do exactly the same thing? Now to be able to do this first I need to look at how am I gonna build up my truth table. One thing I notice here is that I have got PQ PQ. I've only got two different inputs so the setup of the truth table will be the same as it was in this case. So true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, what am I going to need to calculate first to be able to calculate the overall output value? Well, there are brackets in here and brackets in logic, just the same way as in algebra, take priority. So before I can apply the AND operation, I would need to know what the input in here is. So first I would need to calculate the P if then Q. Then I also have to calculate the Q if then P values. And once I've done that, I can then apply the whole low, which is going to be the final AND operation. So, P if then Q. Remember, it's the same as we looked at before, only turns false with this in, uh, input. When the first is true but the second is false, that's when the if then returns a false. Now, how are we going to look at in the opposite way? Right, true implies true, that's true. False implies true is true but true does not imply false so this will give us the false and false implies false is true again what does the end operator do and returns true if both of them are true true and true is true false and true is false true and false is false and true and true is true and look, we ended up with exactly the same output values following the same input combinations. So yes, they are logically equivalent. The last set of laws I would like to talk about is the De Morgan laws. And basically the De Morgan laws telling you how to distribute not negation over and and or. So not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. So see what's happening in here. The negation applied to the input makes it not P, but what the negation also does, it changes AND into OR. The other, the Morgan law, is not P or Q, which is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. I'm going to let you use a truth table and convince yourself that the De Morgan laws do hold. So now I have introduced you to all of the laws of logic that are important for further calculations.